Welcome everybody to the course on Dynamics and Control. My name is Pedro Albertos from the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And today we are going to start with uh, module 4, Control Systems uh, Design. And in particular we are going to deal with the structure of the control system. Just to have a look at the whole uh, course, we are in module 4 and today we are dealing with the control system structure as a first step in designing the control system. So you remember that uh, we are dealing with uh, dynamics systems with uh, many inputs. One of them is the control, a set of them is the, are the control and then uh, we want to generate a control subsystem in such a way that these control uh, signals are generated automatically. Well, uh, to generate the control we need some goals and some information and this information can uh, be obtained through the system uh, closing the loop by the feedback. But this is only one of the options in designing the control system and the objective of uh, our session today is to discuss briefly and on the surface the mm, different structures we can find in controlling the system. So let's uh, have a first uh, a look at uh, the different options, the main uh, options. There are many other structures, ma uh, much more uh, complicated, but we have uh, open loop control, closed loop control, supervisory control, cascade control, and feed forward control and also two degrees of freedom control and finally we will see hierarchical control. As I mentioned these are <coughs> the most uh, common structures but uh, of course we can combine them and uh, generate much more complicated control structures. Let's consider first the open loop control. We have the process, we have the data acquisition system and we have the actuator and then mm, we can manipulate the actuator. In that case the control is the operator or uh, the man or the lady which are uh, dealing with the uh, input to the process. And in that case <coughs> we need to have a good model of the plant and in the controlled uh, plant shouldn't be uh, disturbances is the case of the automatic washing machine that we are manipulating but we don't uh, have a continuous uh, control of uh, the operation. And this corresponds to this scheme where the control and the systems are in series. Well, if we close the loop then we have a, a basic closed loop system and you see that closing the loop can be because we are measuring the uh, input uh, disturbances or we are also measuring the process and we will uh, see that we can based on this idea to generate different control structures. In that case the operator is just uh, introducing the goals to the system and the reference is uh, produced externally either mm, coming from another subsystem or um, fixed by the operator beforehand. <coughs> in that case the operator doesn't need to have a good knowledge of the process and know uh, neither uh, about the disturbances. Just the controller is measuring the um, disturbances and is measuring the measurements and is generating the control action according to the codes. <coughs> <coughs> we may have the operator in a supervisory scheme. In that case the control is uh, done in closed loop as you can see here. There is a sensor of the steam, there is a sensor of the level and there is a level control. So the control of the water for instance, the le uh, water level is done in closed loop and the operator is fixing the references. So it's supervising the closed loop uh, control. <coughs> And we may have many uh, measurements uh, to control one variable. In that case, if you consider the system, we have different sub processes and different disturbances. And if we have some uh, internal measurement like this one, we can um, act 
on the uh, control action uh, without waiting for uh, an error appearing at the output. And this is uh, what we call the cascade control. As you can see, there are uh, loops of control. Uh, the slave controller is just uh, measuring this internal variable and acting on the control action, but the final control is done by the master uh, controller. <coughs> so, uh, this is one example of cascade control. We are controlling here the <coughs> uh, position of uh, um, an, an axis by a DC motor and <coughs> the input is based on the difference between the reference and the position of the actual position. But if there is a load here and this load uh, changes the position of the axis, then we can realize that there, uh, current, the current here will be increased, will change, and then we can act. And then we have a loop to control the current and a loop to control the position. So in that case this is the cascade control. You see that in closed loop we need to have uh, an error to act. This is a drawback, is an advantage because we can generate the control action without a precise model, but we need to have an error. <coughs> in the case that uh, the feed forward control, we are measuring the disturbance or we are mm, getting the reference that we want and based on that and a good model of the process, then we can generate the control input. You see that here there is no uh, loop, but uh, the control action is generated based on the a priori information or the measured information from the disturbance and the generator. <coughs> but uh, we can combine both feed forward and uh, closed loop control. You can see here the example of the steam generator. We are controlling the water level as before. And the water level can be controlled by the, the level controller, but if we know that there is a, an extra consumption of, uh, of uh, steam, then we can modify the input of the water inflow. So this is uh, seen in this uh, picture. You can see that the steam generator has a water level controller. Here's the sensor, here's the controller. But uh, in principle, if we increase the consumption of the steam, then that means that more water is taking off. So the water level will drop. And before we measure this dropping, we can increase the uh, water flow. So we can add here a flow sensor and generate an extra input to the level controller. We can consider also uh, a, a structure which is a bit more complicated. As we know, a process in general, we want to reject the disturbances and we want to follow a reference. <coughs> there are the problems of uh, tracking and the problem of uh, regulation. So we can uh, de um, devise a, a structure like this one where we have a controller which is mainly focused to reject the disturbance, to reduce the effect of the disturbance, and we have a controller which is mainly focused to follow this reference, is the tracking controller. In that case we can adjust these two controllers with different purposes, to reject the disturbance or to follow a reference signal. This is a two degree of freedom control. And the last uh, structure we are going to mm, uh, discuss is the hierarchical control. And probably you remember the example of the controlling the temperature in the human body. Uh, and you know that the uh, control of the temperature is different in, uh, in the, for instance, in the feet or in the hands, uh, but uh, it should be very uh, precise and very fine uh, if you are controlling the mm, head, the brain. <coughs> so that means that uh, we don't have a unique loop, we have different loops uh, dealing with the local control for the uh, different parts of the body and, or the different organs 
and these controls uh, are different in quality, in speed and in uh, uh, accuracy. In general, we can <coughs> generalize this idea that if we have different subprocessors, each one of them will have a local control and each one of them will share this information uh, in such a way that there is a central or coordinating control which is providing the references for the different uh, local controllers. And so the control is um, structured in different layers with a different uh, time scale and dealing with different information. At the lower level, they, they should be very fast and they should uh, deal with very precise information. At the higher level, they act uh, in the a slow uh, time scale and the information will be mainly aggregated or more uh, generalized. Well, uh, what have we seen today? We have seen the <coughs> control systems uh, structure. In particular, we see that uh, it could be open or closed loop. The main difference is that for open loop we need to have a very good model of the plant, very good model and no disturbances. In the closed loop we have uh, the advantage that we receive some information, information from the plant and then we can react uh, trying to uh, perform in the way we want. So it could be in that uh, way feedback or feed forward and we may have just uh, one single loop or multi-loop and multi-goal. <coughs> so what is next? Once we have uh, defined the control system structure, uh, this uh, subsystem, the control subsystem, should have some uh, parameters that we must uh, tune, we must uh, adjust. Well, the computation of these parameters is uh, rather complicated, but in the next uh, session we will see some uh, general ideas about how to uh, tune or how to define these uh, control system parameters. Well, uh, that's uh, all for, for today. Thank you.